Hey guys, these are a pair of plate carriers from HRT Tactical. This one is the Rack, which is their flagship carrier, and this is the H-Rack, which is their slightly slimmed down, uh, cheaper version. Uh, there's another difference that we'll get to in a little bit. It's very important. I was interested in doing a review on the H-Rack, and I was planning to buy one, and then I got contacted by HRT Tactical, and they offered to send me a carrier for review. And I said, oh yeah, actually I was interested in doing the H-Rack, so sure, why not? Um, but they talked me into trying out the, uh, the flagship, the rack, and so this carrier they sent to me for review. Um, for reasons we'll get to in just a little bit, didn't really work out for me, so I ended up buying uh, the H-Rack because I wanted to do a more thorough, proper review. So first of all, got to get over the differences between the two carriers. Basically, the only real difference is that the rack has the zip-on back panel ecosystem, whereas the H-Rack just has a Molly rear. In every other way, they're basically the same except in sizing. You can only get the rack in a, sort of an extra large size, whereas you can get the H-Rack in a medium size. So I am a medium plate carrier guy. I wear medium uh, plates, either sappy medium or 10 by 12s. Standard, you know, the same plates that 85% of everybody wears, right? Because everybody's got the same organs. Uh, turns out the full-size rack is just a little too big. It was really difficult to adjust it down properly to fit me, and also uh, my plates sat a little bit loose in it. So anyway, quick features overview of both of these carriers. Both of them have basically the same exact design, and they come with a pretty good selection of stuff out of the box. Like, they come with shoulder pads that have the uh, cable routing on them, You've got um, Molly admin space up front, plus the rack has the zip-on system for their back panels. The cummerbund that they come with is this one here, just the uh, simple elastic with the buckles. They've also got additional cummerbund options. So there is a non-QD version of the cummerbund that's I think like two inches uh, and has Molly on it. And then there's the full-size cummerbund, which is the one on this one. This is the five inch cummerbund, it's got Molly, and it has the QDs. So both these carriers have a whole bunch of different padding options, which I think is supposed to make them more comfortable when they're heavily loaded and you're standing around for a long time. So both of them have uh, a sort of like an insert foam pontoon system where you can insert uh, long vertical slices of foam into a little uh, pocket into the rear of the plate bags. So those give you a little bit more standoff space uh, from your plate, and they also give you a little bit more uh, airflow, I guess. They've also got uh, soft loop Velcro on the inside of the plate bags that you can attach additional padded uh, pontoon things to, kind of similar to what SKD Tactical does on uh, some of their carriers, I believe. They've also got this like padding section up here, which is like a chin rest or something to either rest your chin on so you're not hitting your chin on your plate, or you know, in case it rides up into your chin, it's a little bit more comfortable. These carriers have a whole bunch of different cable management because you could route cables through the uh, padded shoulder pads, through the Velcro loops that are on the sides of the shoulder pads. You've got cable management soft loops here, and then you've also got full Molly admin up front with the Velcro as well. These carriers are fairly flexible with the size of the plates you can put in. There is a, uh, a Velcro flap on the inside that you can adjust to make the plate ride up you know, as high as you need to go to get into the plate bag. Um, on the XL size carrier, I had to adjust it pretty far up. I was definitely able to adjust my plate to sit properly in the carrier. However, then it was really difficult to get the carrier to size properly to me, and there was quite a lot of uh, fabric left over, you know, dangling around the edges and the bottom. The way that the cummerbunds work is similar to the way the Cry JPC works. I'm not super wild about it. Um, the cummerbunds have to be woven with bungee shock cord into sort of like a little uh, loop system that's underneath the back of the, um, the back panel here. There is some advantage to that. Um, even if the cummerbund doesn't have elastic in it, for example, this one, the QD five inch cummerbund, uh, there's no elastic in the cummerbund, but because it's woven in with shock cord, it does stretch and expand, you know, as you move, breathe, or, you know, put on an additional layer. I do find it really difficult and annoying to set up. However, I mean, it is theoretically kind of a fire and forget thing, but it does run into sort of a, an issue with the different uh, cummerbunds. So the one that it comes with is very, very basic, and I really don't think you should hold on to it. You should definitely upgrade to a different cummerbund. Your options are the Velcro uh, attached two inch, which I'm not a big fan of. I've really preferred to move to QDs. The five inch QD one is a much better cummerbund. However, it's got 
a lot of extra material on it because it's sort of a one size fits all and you gotta loop around a whole bunch of extra material and double it up in the back in order to size it properly unless you're just a humongous person. So I really, I don't like that adjustment. It's not as fine adjustment as you would get with a Velcro attached uh, cummerbund, you know, in the rear like Ferro Concepts or Defense Mechanisms and I think Spiritus all use. That's a much easier to adjust. It has much better range of adjustment. Um, and then you can use, you know, a cummerbund with elastic in it like the, uh, the DM uh, hybrid cummerbunds that I use right now. Really like those, really comfortable absolutely fantastic so this cummerbund system is a little bit unfortunate i think so hrt has got a whole placard system that they use um this one is i believe the modulus they also have uh, something called the maximus that's that's more um turnkey i think so the placard system has a big pouch that you can insert an elastic uh, mag carrier into and they have a whole bunch of different um magazine configuration. So this one is set up right now with uh, the three AR-15 mag insert. Uh, there's also a two AR-10 mag insert. Um, I think there's a five mag SMG insert. And then there's the dual pistol mag inserts like they're on this, uh, this little pouch at the front. So this one is the modulus placard and then attached to it is two of these uh, little small pouches. This one is like a little admin pouch. Um, it's got some internal organization is pretty cool and then this one can either accept a sort of like a velcro flap top or one of these uh, dual pistol inserts or yeah, so you put like a multi-tool or whatever in there this placard system works pretty well if you like stacking stuff up on the front i typically would prefer to just have you know a three mag shingle up front and really nothing else um, that's my mileage obviously if you want to carry pistol mags on your carrier um, this is definitely a better way to do it plus um, having admin stuff down here whatever you decide to put in here that's certainly better than trying to get it up here where it's going to interfere with your mag draw and you might bonk your face on it or something so that works pretty well um, the sizing of the modulus placard is a little bit strange like if you do use the two ar-10 mag insert there ends up being a whole lot of uh, dead space on either side of it but it's not big enough for three ar-10 mags same story with the three ar-15 mags it's a little bit wider than it needs to be for three mags um, kind of would be nice to see it more properly sized for three mags and then have a four mag option. Um, same thing because the four AR-15 mags and three AR-10 mags fit very nicely in the same approximate footprint. Anyways, the placards are also adjustable for ride height. These straps can actually be adjusted in there so you can basically raise or lower the placard as you need uh, depending on how you have it configured or what mags you have in there. This one also currently has on it the uh, little sidekick pouch thing, the uh, Warrior Poet multi-hanger, multi-mission hanger, whatever it's called. Um, I like these for carrying radios. You can also carry extra mags in them. Uh, they're ambidextrous, so pretty, pretty neat little add-on to add-on to any carrier. Moving on to the back panel ecosystem. Uh, it's always a little bit frustrating when somebody comes out with their own proprietary ecosystem. However, HRT has enough back panel options that you're not gonna have a problem finding one that suits whatever your needs are. So, you know, is it, annoying that there's a new competing standard yes however if this standard is as good as it is and as full featured as it is then can't really fault them for doing that i guess uh, the interesting thing about their ecosystem is that it has two different sections of zippers so there's a short piece of zipper on the top and a short piece of zipper on the bottom the full size back panels like this one which is sort of like a like a standardized like flat pack kind of thing uh, it zips into both. They've also got half height panels that you can mix and match that only zip into half. So you could do, you know, tearaway medical on the top and then a normal admin thing on the bottom, or you could do, you know, uh, uh, magazines and smoke grenades or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, none of that stuff is all that useful to me. This one, just the flat pack, is probably the one I would find the most useful because you can stick a hydration carrier in it. You can also uh, unzip a zipper around the perimeter of the pack and then it accordions out to a much bigger size. Uh, if you are carrying a whole heck of a lot of stuff, that would definitely work for you. I prefer to have a very trim single hydration carrier on the back, which would be easily attachable to the Molly rear of the H-Rack. So for my money, um, I don't really need zip-on back panel ecosystems. Uh, I appreciate that it's fairly configurable, and if you wanted to quickly remove a panel, you know, you can do that without having to unthread a whole crap ton of Molly or just a whole bunch of Malice clips. Uh, the hydration carrier that's on my defense mechanisms play carrier that thing's never coming off because of how annoying it was to get all those malice clips in there so the last thing we got to talk about is uh their colors and fabric these are advertised as ranger green i don't really believe they are ranger green i think this is just olive drab 
that has either been rebranded as Ranger Green or it's just, you know, it's whatever material they're able to get, I suppose. Um, these carriers are not IR compliant, um, not really even a little bit. They glow pretty badly under IR, and I suspect that's just a, a nature of the fabric. If you compare it to something like the uh, Ranger Green fabric that uh, SKD uses on their uh, hydration carriers, stuff like that, or the uh, Ranger Green fabric on the defense mechanisms, you can see that not only is the color significantly different, but they are uh, a lot less IR reflective than the uh, RAC and the HRAC. That's something I see pretty typically. Um, I also got a hydration carrier from the company Plat Attack that was supposed to be Ranger Green. Same story, the color was not Ranger Green and the IR compliance just wasn't there. That's a very reputable tactical gear company, so it's kind of an odd thing. However, I think a lot of it comes down to the fabric. I suspect, although I don't know for sure, that if you got one of these carriers or something from Plate Attack in Multicam, then it probably would be IR compliant. And I think that's because it's not as easy to source uh, cheap multicam fabric, like properly licensed multicam fabric is probably of a higher standard than just whatever uh, OD green nylon you can find. So if IR compliance is a, is a really critical factor for you, then these are definitely not gonna work unless you spray paint them. Uh, spray painting nylon really fucking sucks, don't do it. So talking about the sizing again really quickly, this one was just too big to work for me. Um, I adjusted the shoulders as pretty much as far as I dared to. Uh, and I still couldn't get the plates to sit properly on my on my body to provide proper coverage like you're supposed to. Um, no such problem with the H-Rack. This one is a, is a proper medium-sized carrier, fits my plates perfectly, fits my torso perfectly. So if you are large enough to use an XL carrier, then that's not gonna be an issue. If you are, uh, you know, a trimmer person, I mean, I'm fairly tall, but I also have a small, weirdly small torso, there's just no way that I could make the uh, the full-size rack work for me. No big loss for me because I don't need the zip-on ecosystem anyway. I prefer this. The only real issue then is that uh, I'm not a fan of the way that the cummerbunds attach or really the cummerbund options. I've definitely been spoiled by the cummerbunds from defense mechanisms. It's really difficult for me now to go back to anything that doesn't have, you know, uh, elastic QD buckles uh, and a quick size adjustment as well. I think the best use for these carriers is um, probably as police plate carriers. And it's hard for me to speak to that because I am not a police officer. That doesn't mean you should DM me your felonies. I don't wanna see that shit. Uh, the point being that I think these carriers are best suited for carrying a really heavy load and standing around for a long time. Something that I suspect a police officer who has to wear a carrier might end up doing huge amount of uh, gear, you know, medical, tactical, breaching, whatever the hell you're going to put into a back panel. That's something you would probably want a big back panel ecosystem for, or, you know, a breacher panel up top, tear away medical up on the bottom. That's very much for, you know, SWAT or police in my mind. Um, same story with all of the padding, like the pontoons and stuff. Uh, not particularly comfortable if you have to like sit in a vehicle or, um, like if you have to go prone because they actually sort of concentrate the pressure into a smaller area, something that uh, Walsh from Thin Line Defense talked about when he reviewed, um, I think he reviewed a rack. But if you're just standing around for a long time with a super heavily loaded up carrier, then that's when those pontoons really uh, give you the benefit of increased airflow and a little bit of a standoff so you're not just in contact with your big thick plate the whole time. Same story with the cummerbunds. These cummerbunds are uh, thick and padded, provide pretty solid support thick padded shoulder straps, the little chin pad and everything. It all seems to be designed to carry a whole lot of weight and stand around with it for a long ass time. Not exactly what I need out of a plate carrier. I probably could make the H-Rack work for me. However, given that I don't love the placard system, I don't love the cummerbund system, uh, a little bit leery of that IR non-compliant fabric, and also, I think this is a similar price or maybe even slightly more expensive than a defense mechanism. So if you need something like that, then you probably know more about it than I do already. So you may have to answer your own questions there. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about these carriers or carriers in general, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do so via Subscribestar. There's a link in the video description to that. And uh, probably see you guys soon.